We'll come up to this room. This room has no purpose yet, but it does provide me a nice safe area where I can show you guys what I've learned about redstone dust so far. Let's equip it here. And I suppose... I'll use dirt for this. I don't want to use stone because it'll... Dirt's a very valuable material, I found. It's very useful because it's easy to manage. You can break it apart easily with your hand. It's expendable. And it works for most things. Alright, so we've got a... Oh, man, this cobblestone. Ugh, I had to fill in the floors with it, and I really wish to turn it into smooth stone. I don't like how it looks. So that just looks really ugly to me. Anyway... Let's take this door, and we'll place it right here. Alright, so we've got a door set up, right? Now, normally you just right-click a door to open it, but what if you wanted to open that door from a distance? Well, for that, you can use redstone dust. And I'm going to set down a switch um, right here. Why not? See that? There we go, we've got a switch. And we will wire the switch to the door using redstone dust. There we go. So we've got the door wired up to this switch. And whenever you right-click the switch, it powers the redstone dust, lighting it up, and that opens up the door. All right, not bad. Um, we got a further door. Let me show you what else you can do with redstone ore. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop the switch right here. Before you begin any experimentation of your own with redstone dust, it's important to know some of its uh, limitations. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, there you go, 19 away. If we right click on this switch now, you would think it would open the door, but any power source that powers redstone dust will only power it for 15 blocks. So it only goes up to 15 and then stops right there. So uh, if we wanted to open that door from a distance further away than 15, from 15 blocks, you have to have some means of extending the power. And let me show you how you do that. Let's turn off the switch. And I'm going to break these two down, right in the middle. And I'm going to put down some blocks. All right, well, why am I putting down blocks? We're going to use a redstone torch. A redstone torch is always on, um, unless it receives power from another source. <clears throat> redstone torches, well, let me, let me drop one down here just so I can show you exactly what I mean. The redstone torch is on right now. So any dust that I attach to it is also on. Notice how it's red and glowing, which differs from this dust right here, which is going to be just dark colored because it has no power going to it. Well, this redstone torch is always on because it's receiving no power from anything else, and it's providing power to everything attached to it. Okay, so that's how redstone torches work in their default state. So we've got this one attached to this block, um, and we've got a switch attached to that uh, block through redstone torch. So if we provide power to the block that the torch is on, the torch turns off. So now, if you think about it in like computer terms, it's like a binary switch. Right now, it's in its zero state. It's turned off because it's receiving power from this switch. This switch gives this block power, which turns off any redstone torches connected to it. So, knowing that, what we can do is we can attach... Let's go ahead and turn this back off. If we drop some redstone dust right here, the torch powers all of that to that door. So now we've extended the power, we've provided uh, an extension to it, because this is providing no power to the torch. The torch is on, and the torch is powering the door. So once we flip the switch, the torch turns off, and there's no more power going to the door. So we have just connected that door to this switch from a distance further than 15 blocks away. And you can use this coupling system, uh, you can use this extension system to power doors or anything that can uh, accept power from very long distances. All right, so now I'm going to set up a dou uh, double door setup here. Let's take a couple of doors from here. 
There we go. We've got double doors. Double doors are very attractive. They look very good in most structures, or depending on how you design the structure, but they look very good overall. But they don't act as you would expect them to. Um, you generally want to open up both doors at the same time. In video games, usually whenever you right-click on a double door in a game somehow, or in most games, you'll usually expect both doors to open up at the same time. That is not the case in Minecraft. They open up individually. They still look good, and of course they still function as doors. You can go through them. But if you want to get that opening up at the same time functionality, you're going to need to use redstone so that you can trigger them both at the same time. So you would think that the setup would be something like this. Take the switch, and I'll just go ahead and drop the switch right here. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we've got the switch there. And you want to power both doors. Now see, in order to power a door, you can connect it directly to the door, like this. And that will power the door. Or you can power another block that the door is connected to, like this one. And that powers that door. So, in order for it to work, you connect both doors to the switch. Once you turn it on, well, let's go ahead and set the door so that it's closed. And once you turn it on, why did it only open that one? They're both getting power. Hmm, that's kind of odd. The doors are alternating now. Isn't that a little weird? They both receive power. They're, they're both on. Well, for some reason, double doors don't react quite the same way you would think that they should. Whenever you want them both to act at the same time, whenever you want them both open or both closed, you need to make sure one door has no power while the other does have power. So, we need to make this one switch provide power to both these doors in an alternating state. And let me show you how you can do that. We're going to use a variation on the system that we uh, just used. to uh, The same way that we provided an extension, we're going to do that with... Uh, with a redstone torch. Okay, we'll drop um, we'll drop a couple of blocks here. We'll drop a redstone torch on top of that block. And now we're going to connect. Let me turn that off. Without even touching the block, we're going to connect the switch to the first door. Okay, the door opens up. Now, making sure we don't touch that either. We're going to connect the redstone to the uh, redstone torch. So now the torch is going to be receiving. It should have been receiving power, and it should have turned off. Why would you not? Like I said, I am by no means any kind of an expert on uh, redstone. I'm experimenting with it myself. Okay, this is the best way to set it up. See, redstone torches react differently. Uh, on depending on what side of the block you put them on but in this particular setup the redstone torch is off because now we're providing power to it just as before and now we're going to attach that to this end of the door so now you can see we've got redstone attached to both doors and the door is opening and closing at the same time with the switch because we've got one door receiving power from the switch and while it's flipped in one uh, setup on that side, it's flipped on the opposite setup on this side. So we've got an alternating current there, and the double doors are acting as we intended to.